Spring break in Tampa Bay. Definitely not thinking about sea level rise. Oh, snap. Hello, Professor Mitchum. The sea's rising here too? Um, I'm afraid it is. Ice is melting, water is warming, and warmer water takes up more space. It's less dense. Dang. In fact, NOAA projects that the U.S. will see 10 to 12 inches of sea level rise over the next 30 years. And if emission trends continue, that number hovers between three and a half and seven feet by the end of the century. And about a foot of that has already happened. But of course, results will vary depending on where you are. California lucked out with a climate pattern called the Pacific Decadal Oscillation, keeping the sea tame early in the state's development and inviting settlement along its coastal cliffs and bluffs. But you take one look at the Gulf and you realize we would have settled it anyway. That is, if Davis Islands is any indicator. Just south of downtown Tampa, the affluent community was built on two mudflat islands that were dredged and expanded in the 1920s, turning the archipelago into sought-after, dollar-turning real estate. And what about flooding? Flood is just something that happens here, even on sunny days. The high tide's enough to flush the street with corrosive salt water. You know, we've always had it. High tide flooding is not anything that's brand new. What's happening though is that we're seeing it more frequently because the sea level is standing higher. Couple that with hurricanes and even the mildest of storm surges. And you got a pretty expensive problem. Houses have adapted by building up. And flood insurance rates have spiked. 90% of Floridians with flood insurance are covered by FEMA, which offers discounts to counties that comply with adaptation standards. We have to be 12 feet above sea level. We lived in a house prior here that was just one story and we were paying about 6000 a year in flood insurance. But now that we're up out of the flood zone, it's probably going to be around 3300 But the state knows what's up. They've invested heavily in flood research, infrastructure upgrades, and even wetland restoration. Critics worry that flood defense spending addresses only the consequences rather than the causes of a rising sea. Namely, planet warming oil and gas pollution, which Florida lawmakers are actively working to protect. How much money can you throw at this problem before a long-term decision's gotta be made? And how messy would that be for a community like Davis Islands, which could well be underwater by the end of the century? There's a question too big for a sheep on spring break. And seeing as our own coastline was getting chewed up by the sea, I thought I'd find my answer back in California.